the Emperor's children have a rich history in Warhammer 40k. And in this video, we'll be looking at their history before the Horus Heresy, we'll take a look at the Primarch Fulgrim, and as well as this, we'll take a look at the Legion's actions during the Heresy. So if you get happy at the thought of a downfall of a Legion, then the Emperor's children is one you will want to watch. And if you enjoy videos like this, please check out the playlist. There's plenty in there for you to enjoy. The earliest recruits to the Emperor's children were recruited from noble houses of Europa. And this was done in tribute to the Emperor following the defiance against the Emperor and his Thunder Warriors. And after some time, the noble houses of Terra would also follow suit and offer up their finest youth into the ranks. And during the Great Crusade, the Legion were used to protect diplomatic missions. And to reflect this, the armour was painted in the Imperial Purple. And when part of the Legion was killed in defence of the Emperor during the Proximian Betrayal, the Emperor gave them the right to use the Emperor's personal standard, the Palatine Aquila. So this, obviously itself, is such a great reward and is shown with immense pride from these early Emperor's children. Now, this is where we get to the part of the Downward Spiral. So, less than a year after the events that took place at Proxima, a part of the Gene Seed Reserve was completely lost. And to add further to this pain, the Gene Seed stock that remained on Terra was corrupted, which we now call the Blight. So the Blight would cause organ degeneration in the Legion, leading to the deaths of many, many Marines. And of course, they did put measures in place to help reverse the decline of the Legion, such as purging, salvaging from their previous dead. However, the damage to the Legion was already done, and the Legion's numbers were only in the few hundreds. And one thing you've got to bear in mind, these were completely dwarfed by most of the other Legions, where they would have like a hundred thousand marines and so on. And now we'll get to the part of where they rediscover Fulgrim. So like his brothers, Fulgrim was cast away from Terra in gestation pods, whilst he was still an infant. And Fulgrim landed on a planet of Chemos. So Chemos was a mining world, and to give you an idea of how Chemos was, it was a planet surrounded by a thick nebula dust, so it was pretty much in constant twilight, it was very resource poor, even after plenty of years of intense mining. The planet itself was not able to produce enough food for the population, so in reality, it's a terrible place, and one where your sole existence was essentially just to scrape by and try to survive. So it wouldn't give the best upbringing to the people of Chemos. Fulgrim's capsule was found by the caretakers, on Chemos, and even though orphans were usually just ended, they managed to convince the leaders to spare his life. Essentially, Fulgrim being perfection personified, beautiful, things like that, that helped spare his life. And for good cause, by the time Fulgrim reached 15, he had risen the ranks where he started off as a labourer and was able to improve the efficiencies of the operations he was working in. And over time, this led to the planet producing in a surplus. And therefore, it saved the planet. And at the same time, it catapulted Fulgrim to the leader. So this planet was struggling to produce, struggling to get enough food. Finally, they had the surplus they needed to be able to trade for things like food. So survival became so much easier. And soon after this is then when Fulgrim would be reunited with the Emperor. The Emperor would then teach Fulgrim about the goings-ons of the Great Crusade in trying to bring all of mankind together. Fulgrim then returned to Terra to meet the Third Legion that had been created from his gene seed and would then discover the horror of the blight that ravaged the Emperor's children. The newly returned Primarch then gave an inspiring speech to his Legion and then things start to go south. Fulgrim is a perfectionist and what he wanted is this from his legion he wanted the legion to go above and beyond for the honor of the emperor and in his pursuits of greatness 
He did grow close to his brother Horus, and as a legion, the Emperor's children would achieve some great things on behalf of the Imperium. And, as I said before, with things going south, this is where we start to see the start of Fulgrim's fall. The Emperor's children were sent to destroy the population of a planet called Laeron. Laeron was a planet rich in resource that would be of a great value to the Imperium. The issue was with this planet was there was a serpentine species that worshipped Slanesh. And they were formidable fighters and were staunch defenders of the palaces and temples built in honour of the Chaos God. But they did it. Fulgrim also found that what they had been defending was an important Slaneshi artifact, the Blade of Lair. I know what you're thinking, a very original name. The Blade of Lair on Lair on. And unbeknown to Fulgrim, this was a vessel of a greater demon. And this was a nail in the coffin for Fulgrim. The demon would whisper to Fulgrim and would eventually weaken his resolve. This, coupled with the relationship with Horus, would help sway Fulgrim to fall to chaos. And it's also good to point out as well, things that the Legion also benefited from, from the attack on Lair. They would also discover some Xenotech, body modifications, that will all form part of the Empress Children, and would form parts of, you know, models that are symbolic, such as the Noise Marines. So, after the start of the fall to Chaos of Fulgrim, the corruption would spread to his commanders, and to the squads, till there were few remaining Loyalist Marines. These Loyalist Marines were killed on Istvan 3, which will be covered in another video, as this is such an epic, incredible story, and deserves a lot more time than a couple of seconds dedicated to it. So this is when the now corrupted Empress children enter the heresy properly. So over time, the numbers have grown. So I've got a force between 45 to 55,000 Marines, and this would then lead to the Emperor's children taking part in other things during the heresy. Most importantly, the Istvan 5 massacre. So I think one thing I want to take away from all of this is, if you're going to commit an atrocity, it's likely to be on Istvan. Or somewhere in Istvan 2. Istvan 3, Istvan 5, you know, there's a common theme here. So the important thing for this though, Istvan 5 is where Fulgrim would kill his brother. And it was arguably his favourite brother, Ferris Manus. Fulgrim would be shocked by his actions, and after would gain some clarity about the heresy and what he had just done. And in this moment of weakness, he accepted the demon's offer to send him into oblivion. However, in reality, this allowed a demon to leave the sword and to possess Fulgrim, leaving Fulgrim partly in his mind somewhere out. Over time, Fulgrim did gain back control, and as part of proving this, he allowed himself to be tortured by his um, fellow men. However, I can imagine being a follower of Celeste, he quite enjoyed it. And at this point, it was clear that Fulgrim wanted to ascend into demonhood. To do this, he wanted to betray Perturabo, and anyway, things don't go exactly to plan. Things go a bit pear-shaped, but either way, Fulgrim becomes a demon. So technically you could say it went to plan. And this led to this Emperor's children being a little bit in disarray, devolving a little bit into war bands. Some remained with Fulgrim and joined him on his many escapades. And some went off and did their own things. But they did eventually come to Fulgrim's aid after Lorgar used Zaydu Layak to force Fulgrim to join the war properly again. He let out this almighty scream. All the Emperor's children across the galaxy heard it and came rushing to his needs. And if you want to know how weird the Emperor's children got, well, during the Siege of Terror, whilst all the other traitor legions were assaulting the Imperial Palace, you know, trying to complete the goal, the Emperor's children were just committing atrocities on the local population just because. Because that's what they like to do. So we know the traitor legions obviously failed and fled, and the Emperor's children carried on committing atrocities all the way back to the Eye of Terror. 
And post heresy, they continue to complete raids, be an absolute nuisance to absolutely everyone, and generally not be likable to anyone else in the setting. Although, that being said, they are a well loved traitor legion by Warhammer fans, and with notable characters like Fabius Bile, Clone Fulgrim, who's uh, trapped away with Trezin, these will be explained in another video so you can see why because once again I think they deserve their own video and of course the next video in this series will cover the fourth legion itself the iron warriors because we've done the first legion we obviously couldn't do the second legion we've just done the third legion so it makes sense to do the fourth anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope you liked hearing about the demise of the Empress children and how things went pear-shaped if you want me to go into more detail about anything, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.